Hi, I'm Patrick Ormond, AMGA instructor team member, and I'm here talking about releasing a loaded auto blocking plate. So this might happen if your climber has fallen. Uh, they may have fallen below a, a roof, and you might need to lower them back down. So I need to put a little bit of slack into this system, but this is not a primary lowering uh, method. So I'm not going to lower some in the whole pitch. They just need a little bit of slack, maybe to get back onto the rock. Um, and so let's look at a few methods how we do that. So the first thing I like to do, and I'll do this if someone's maybe climbed past a piece of gear and it's tight and they need some slack to unclip it. And this is really quick and easy. All they do is ratchet the carabiner that the rope is clipped through. So I can just go, I'm going to maintain control of the brake strand. And then I'm just going to go up and down with this. And you can see that feeds out a little bit of slack, just an inch or so at a time. And that's going to give my climber just enough slack either to step back down onto a ledge or unclip a piece, like I said, that's tight. So the next methods are going to introduce more slack. I need to lower someone further down and we have to actually change the direction on the plate and open it up. So a couple key points there that I need to do is redirect the brake strand and I have to put a backup on my harness. So I'm going to put my backup on first. That's going right onto my belay loop. And this is just an auto block. Make sure that grabs. And I like to just, as I'm setting this up, put a catastrophe knot back there. And then we're going to redirect the brake strand. going to come up here through the master point. And now I need some sort of lever to change the direction on this. So quick and easy thing if I have my nut tool. Okay, so I'm going to put the nut tool in the slot, the open slot, and just slowly Pull back on that, and you can see that starts to lower. So that takes quite a bit of force. It's not even that comfortable to lower someone a long distance with this. So, but. Works pretty well can't really give a smooth lower, so it's not for a long distance. So the last method then, if I need to get more leverage to open the plate up, I'm going to use a long sling. So I still have my auto block hands-free on here and brake strand redirected. So I'm going to take a skinny sling and this threads through the bottom hole. It's girth hitched on there. And then I'm going to redirect this up on the shelf. I need, need some separation here. And then I'm going to clip this back in to my harness and use my body weight. So I'll tie this short. I can only extend so much as I have on my clove hitcher. I can obviously lower myself out more, but I should have room here. This doesn't need to be a locker that I'm clipping into. And I want to check everything here before I go. And I'm going to pull in. Let's see if I tied this short enough. I might have to readjust. I'm going to ease back on this slowly. There we go. And now, I 
it's going to open up. There we go. So I can lower quite a ways if I need to here, but again, it's takes quite a bit of work for me to keep my weight on here and control this. So not the preferred method. Keep in mind, this is for an emergency lower. Someone got stuck under a roof or took a fall and you gotta get them off the loaded auto blocking plate. Those were three methods for releasing a loaded auto blocking plate. Remember, those are for an emergency lower. If uh, someone's taken a fall and you need to get them back down to a stance, something along those lines. All right, at this point, I've decided that lowering isn't an option and I need to transfer the load from my plate. I need to get my device out and transfer the load onto the anchor in a load releasable Munter mule hitch. So in order to do that, I've got backup knot here so I can let go. And now I'm going to take my cordelette and I'm going to transfer the load onto the cordelette, so the ratchet. So I'm going to start by tying a clem heist and just a series of wraps. Just needs to be enough that it grabs. It's a skinny rope, so six or so. And then this is going to go just to keep this out of my way. I want to build this on the shelf. And so I'm going to tie this in a munter in the for the lowering position. I'm going to put a twist in there, pull the tension out, and then clip that back through and lock that. And now munter this off or mule this off. And with my cord here, if I cinch that down, I can just pass the tails through the that bite. Okay. I can set that. Now I'm going to set up my munter on the rope strand and I'm going to tie this same thing munter in the lowering position. It doesn't have to be tight. In fact I need a little bit of slack in there. Okay so right now I have brake control on here. It's a good idea to put some hand wraps on. Set that. And now I'm going to do that same ratcheting that I tried earlier. And that's going to just introduce enough slack to load up my ratchet on my uh, cordelette there. So now I can take the plate out of the system. I'm going to clean that up now before it's loaded. And I'm just going to pull that slack through the munter and now mule that off. And tie a overhand back up on that. And now make sure everything's locked. I can release the load back onto the rope. There we go. Pull that out. And take my cord off. So that gets us to baseline. And I have a number of options from here. I might need to rappel down to my climber and check on them. I could counterbalance rappel out of here and get us down to the next ledge. Or I can go to a hauling system and try to raise my climber up to the ledge that I'm on.